So now Geechee's exposing the business of battle rap. Let's talk about it. Say with ARP or organic, you know what I'm saying? Or anybody that owns their own. I think the, the goal at the end of the day is to own something that you can be able to like give away to yours. You know what I'm saying? And then do that. Another one. Battle Booth is half a gang on the low. Be half a gang on the low. I'm and I'm I'm Battle Booth gang, so y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. The Battle Booth. If you look him up, y'all go subscribe to his channel. already know what it is man it's your boy joe coming at you live and direct from the battle booth if you're not subscribed make sure you subscribe you heard hey i just want to say man salute to norbs bro for doing what you're doing bro salute to norbs bro uncompromised media gang you already know what it is bro salute to geechee you know what i'm saying for coming out for geechee for being himself bro and for just speaking how he wants to speak and say what he wants to say thank you geechee for being you bro you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like with a lot of battle rappers, bro, a lot of battle rappers hold back things that they want to say and things that they want to let us know in fear of something maybe, in fear of maybe repercussions, consequences, things like that when it comes to your employer, right? URL caffeine. I feel like there's a lot of battle rappers that don't speak out enough, right? Or don't try to put other people on game, right? When it comes to figuring out this industry and this game, you know what I mean? Which is quite literally what this is turning into is a game, right? It's just a game to be played. Just like everything else, every other business, anything that has to do with money. Battle rap now, the industry is becoming a game to be played. And there's not enough battle rappers that come out and talk about these types of things. There are some. Most recently, we have our Briz Rothsteins. We got our Murder Mooks. You know what I'm saying? Gichi Gotti is actually one of them as well. Gichi Gotti is one of those guys, bro, that is very quickly learning what is happening here in battle rap, bro. Gichi Gotti is one of those that is taking what's happening here in battle rap and using it to his advantage because he completely understands the type of power and leverage that somebody like a Gichi Gotti holds. So fortunately for Geechee Gotti, he's in a situation where he can actually do something like that. A lot of other battle rappers are not. So I'm very happy that Geechee, I'm very happy for somebody like Geechee Gotti and the fact that he's figuring things out the way that he's figuring it out. Now, one topic that Geechee Gotti brought up on this podcast that I think is very important, bro, and I've spoken on this topic multiple times, multiple times, bro. People don't believe me. So this is why I decided to clip. I'm going to clip. I'm going to clip it. I'm going to just clip it. And I'm going to put it right here for you guys. Now, the topic of ownership. This is the actual topic. If people haven't got the gist by now, that's the actual topic of these videos. When Norbs talks about this shit, when, when, when I talk about ownership, when, when, when people talk about things that like this, that's the point, is ownership. If you haven't paying attention, bro, ownership has been a big topic of discussion. Not in battle rap, everywhere. We're talking about music, we're talking about podcasting and media, YouTube. Which ownership is single-handedly one of the most important things that could possibly exist. Why? Because ownership equals wealth. Ownership equals wealth. When you own something, right, it's wealth. If you own properties, right, that's wealth. Those are things that you can pass down generation to generation. I talk about this topic of ownership a lot. That is not the first time that I've spoken about the topic of ownership. That won't be the last. I'm 30 right now. I just recently turned 30, right? And I've been paying attention a lot to life, real life. And this isn't in just battle rap where this topic of ownership is extremely important for us to start to learn The topic of ownership is something that's been happening a lot lately in not just battle rap, but music, podcasting, just like I was saying in my clip. The reason that ownership is important 
Let me just let me just play this clip for you guys real quick. Let me just let me just play this real quick for you guys because put them on. Yeah, facts. Can you dive into why more you're, you're trying to really go independent and and, and yeah. do your own thing? Yeah, well, basically, you know, I feel like as any person in in any genre, like whether it's music, whether it's battling, whether it's like sports, anything. Yeah. You kind of want to control your own brain. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like that's the ultimate goal. You know what I'm saying? Like I think when, when, when you got Jay Z, he started off. You know, he wanted like they was doing a Def Jam thing. Where it was like, yo, I gotta have my Rockefeller. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I gotta be able to put my folks on. It's the same way with anybody else. You know what I mean? I think that that's more so where my mindset is at. Where independence is everything. You can't buy that. You can't buy that freedom of, of owning your things because you want to. Because at the end of the day, it's just like I watch. This is where D2 starts to get into the ownership aspect, actually owning things. I always go back to the Dang Dash interview on The Breakfast Club where he's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? That that his son, like he want to be like he's living for his kids. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like his last name means everything to him. Like he want to be like so now he can literally. d is also right now getting into generational wealth. It don't matter if you watching it or not. If he got Dash movies, he can give that. He can give that. His son can own Dash movies when mm -hmm. years is later. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, I can't. I can't give my kids uh, no stock in RBE. You know what I'm saying? I can't give my kids no stock in URL, King of the Dot, and all those leagues I've battled on or will battle on or things of that nature. But I can do that with the riot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if I, if I wanted to say, all right, when I retire, this is your thing. You run this. This is how we do it. I can show y'all. This is the papers. This is how you. Keep this going. Even if you don't turn this into battling, you might turn this into a, a hip hop cypher thing that y'all do with y'all. I don't know what y'all going to be doing in 10 years. And he's 100% right. The last thing he just said, he doesn't know what we're going to be doing in 10 years. I've made this point multiple times is we don't know what the trajectory of battle rap is going to be. We have no idea. There's no possible way that we can tell that either. I'm sure that when big daddy kane or when krs one or when you know these older rappers were you know making songs and they didn't think that they would blow up you know what i mean and they didn't think that music and hip-hop would become literally a lifestyle that's what it's become music and hip-hop became a lifestyle more than just huge music blew up to becoming more than bigger it was bigger than huge music became bigger than than life itself bro and this is the thing we can't possibly determine or we don't know what's going to happen with, you know, battle rap down the line. That's why somebody like Geechee would be concerned and concern himself with ownership. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a possibility that battle rap will become as big as music. It's a possibility. It's probably not a probability, right? But it's a possibility. And thinking like that is key. Because you'll always be thinking to the future as opposed to thinking right now. Instant gratification. So Geechee's talking about some very important topics right here. These are the things that battle rappers need to start thinking about more so than just the immediate gratification, instant gratification of getting a $5,000 paycheck and signing this crazy contract where now you have to battle 12 times a year. The concept of ownership is important because ownership can create generational wealth, especially if battle rap does become as big as music or even remotely close battle rap doesn't even have to become as big as music it, it, it could become half as big and it'll still be a huge 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 corporation the reason that these contracts and things get created right and people have to really start paying attention to these things is because contracts are meant and are created to prevent you from getting these things from getting generational wealth from getting Whatever it is, it's to prevent you from that. Contracts prevent you from being able to do these things freely on your own and be able to work for somebody else or another company or do your own thing so that you can make your own money under the umbrella of some. That's what contracts do. They try to prevent you from trying to prevent us from getting to that generational wealth, from getting wealthy. And God, he's on to that. Here's when y'all old enough to run it, but I can give you that. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to make you. A battler, you can literally be. You can come right into being a league owner. You know what I'm saying? You want you, you want to, and 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 know everything about the business. And I think that's that's the financial security that everybody wants. Like Smack Kid can can have stock. He can be if Smack retire, he can make his kid my boss if I was signed to URL. You know what I'm saying? And that's his. That's only if you know how to go about that, though. Which is why I'm glad that people like Norbs 
and Geechee Gotti and Briz Rawstein and Murder Mook bring these things up because if it wasn't for these topics and these guys a lot of us would be naive to what's happening a lot of us would be naive to what's happening financial freedom of being a boss of his company you know what i'm saying same with well, ARP. Just, just want to put that out there yeah, yeah but same with arp or organic you know what i'm saying or anybody that owns their own i think the the goal at the end of the day is to own something that you can be able to like give away to yours, you know what I'm saying? And then mm -hmm. do that and then teach others. I'm not like a selfish dude. All the cats I book, I teach them the game, you know what I'm saying? I always try to show them a, a way of, of opening up their brand and, and all right, this is how you negotiate with these leads. This is how you do this, do that. I do that with people that have been in the game longer than me a lot of times about negotiations and things mm -hmm. like that and try to teach them how to like, you know, just talk and, and own business and, and be and stand on their business because of course we all got to work for somebody about something. You know what I'm saying? It's always mm -hmm. like every every aspect of life is something like where you might have to work and do something, but at the end of the day, your main goal is to eventually be able to use whatever you worked for, whether you worked for four years for this company and you want to take it and now you want to be a barber. So you now you was, you was in barber school the whole time. You was That's another point that I feel like is very important. A lot of these battle rappers, are dedicating a lot of their time, a lot of their life to this. If 20 years passes by, let's say Tay Rock, let's take Tay Rock, for example, who's been battle rapping for a long time. 30 years passes by and Tay Rock, let's just use the band as, as an example, never realized this type of information that Geechee's right now preaching, right? That Norbs tries to get at every week on his podcast. That Spanish Harlem talks about when it comes to the, the business, that Briz and Mook talk. Then what happens? What happens after that 20 years if we don't know this information? We get nothing. We get absolutely nothing. All we got was that $1,000 paycheck that caffeine was cutting every week. But we never learned that maybe I should work with other people, maybe even a lawyer to maybe renegotiate and do things that are going to help me and benefit me and my family in the future. That's what God is talking about. That's the position that he's not trying to be in. And that's a position that I don't want to see a lot of these battle rappers in too, which is why I myself decide to add myself into this conversation and add my two cents when it comes, because for the, for the few people that do watch me, you know, hopefully there's some battle rappers. I know I do have a lot of local battle rap friends like that are not like on main stages and things. So hopefully they also watch my content. You know what I mean? And just simply take things into consideration. I'm not here to change people's minds or even teach people anything. But to simply put something out there that might spark something in somebody's mind. Like, hey, maybe I should pay more attention to this type of thing. So again... I go back to Gichi Gotti, you know what I'm saying? Like, Gichi Gotti doesn't cease to amaze me, bro. He just keeps doing things that make me that make me grow more respect for him. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of those things, bro. Bringing up and covering the topic of ownership. Because I'll say it again, ownership leads to or can lead to, depending on how you utilize it and how you go about things, because things don't just happen. You also have to put the work behind everything that's done can lead to wealth. With the wealth, if you learn how to use wealth or learn how to maneuver and use money as a tool, can then become generational wealth. And these are the things that our society don't want us to get to. They don't want people like us to get to a point where now we're accumulating generational wealth, bro, because then our society starts to change in our favor not in their favor and by their favor i mean those people that are that have money and that are powerful and that are behind these huge companies and corporations that don't care about us and where we come from in the hood you know what i'm saying they don't care about us that's what i mean that's the, that's the difference it's never a white or black thing it's always a power thing it's a power money thing it's o always has been and always will be until we start to get to the point where we start to realize that and understand Oh, this is how we're being taken advantage of. This is how they're doing it. And we don't even realize it. But this is how they're doing it. Preventing us from becoming wealthy in the future at all. So that's why I love these conversations, bro. Because these conversations are extremely insightful. And if you really listen, you can take a lot from what these people are saying. 
These are older, more experienced guys with the business. And this is just battle rap. If you really, really want to get in tune with the game, there's people that are, that are involved with the music industry that talk about what happens in the music industry as far as the dark side of the business. It is a very, very, very dark and shady business in the music industry. Very dark and shady. So, again, Geechee Gotti, thank you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Even though you just lost to A-Ward again, thank you. You know what I mean? Norb, salute to you, brother. You already know what it is. Uncompromised media, gang, so not for sale. You already know what it is. It's your boy Joe coming at you live and direct from the battle booth. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe.